So I'm actually giving my talk on my Surface, not because I want to increase the number of uh, Windows users from four to five in the room, um, or to see if it works on an incline, uh, which it does for now. Um, thankfully, there's a lip here at the end. But um, because I think it really represents um, a new class of, of machines that we need to think about as, as web developers. Whoops. Hopefully. <laughs> Oh, come on. OK. Aha. Uh-oh. I'm going to restart, though. Here's my demo for later. Um, and the reason that it, it, it really represents a, a new class of machines is that the, the, the web, um, and unless you've been trapped underneath a rock, you know that the web has, um, mobile web has been great, you know, increasing really, really rapidly. Um, uh, uh. So sorry, hang on. Okay, let's try this again. Yay, okay, so as you know, thank you. I knew it was a huge risk using the Surface. I'm gonna push that anyway. Um, so as you know, unless you've been trapped underneath a rock, the usage of the mobile web is increasing at a, a phenomenal rate, right? That's, that shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. If you were underneath the rock, you know, Welcome back. Um, other news, the Berlin Wall has fallen. Um, uh, but what really compounds this, and the reason that I brought the, the Surface up, is that um, it's, not only, it's not only mobile devices that are getting touched, but also desktop devices. Um, and the, sur the Surface is em emblematic of that. Um, but what that really means is that in, as we think about our, our, our websites, is, is that touch is really, going forward, going to be the predominant way that people use um, uh, the web. Um, and I'm going to pick on, um, so some of the research we've done as part of the surface is um, there's you know, obviously patterns that don't work with the web or with the touchable web. And one of them I'm going to pick on is the hover. Um, uh, obviously, hover does not work with touchable web. There's no state when you're using your finger um, where you're not, you know, you're not, you're kind of over it, but, but not on it. Um, and I'm going to pick on that, but there's a number of other UI techniques like that. Um, in our research, we found that um, over 65% of websites were using some mechanism like this that made it very difficult to use um, at a very high level UI technique to use a touchable web. Um, so my ask is that if you're one of those 65, have a look at your, your website and make sure you're not, you're not breaking the touchable web. The second thing I wanted, to think of, wanted you to think about is that um, the touchable web means that you need to think about the size of your touch targets. Um, and as part of doing the surface, uh, we did a lot of research around what's the optimal size of touch targets. Um, and we did that. We measured people's fingers. We found that, the, that, that uh, kids, when they first are able to use a touchable web, they have roughly 8 millimeter fingers up to the largest um, may, or adult has you know, roughly a 19 millimeter finger um, with kind of an 11 millimeter average. Um, and we use that to do research on what the smallest target size or kind of the optimal target size you should use. Um, and so we ran a bunch of experiments, um, changing the size of the touch target um, over a range of different values. And what we found is that as you went below 5 millimeters, asymptotically the error rate at which they, you know, the error rate they had trying to complete that task went up asymptotically. Um, and it's compounded by the fact that they spent uh, asymptotically more time trying to select that, um, that particular touch target. Uh, so what our research showed was that somewhere between seven and nine millimeters for a touch target is kind of the, kind of the sweet spot. And on screen, that works out to something like 40 to 50 pixels. Um, 85% of sites that we looked at had some, some page that violated you know, this, this rule and made it hard for um, touch users to use. So if you're, one of, you know, if, if you're building uh, a, an application that you want used on, um, on, on devices with touch, I encourage you to look to make sure that you're not one of these 85%. 
Um, another thing we did is we looked at uh, kind of a heat map of where it's easy for people to, to, to reach on their, on their mobile device. Um, and this is an example we used for the Surface. Um, the green areas show the areas that are very easy to reach uh, for uh, the, the 90 percentile of users. Um, the red areas are the, 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 you know, the people with the biggest hands, and then kind of the 10th percentile. Um, and what's obvious from this is that the middle right and left are the easiest places for people to, 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 you know, to hit touch targets. They have the most accuracy. They're the most you know, ergonomically correct. Um, and so as you're thinking about this, and what we do at Microsoft is, as we, the, the guidance we give our designers is um, essentially that, that um, the, the band that runs kind of in a U from the, the left and the right middle down through the bottom and back up are the best places to have your interaction area. And on the phone, probably makes a lot of intuitive sense, kind of in the middle of the screen are the best places to have your touch targets. Um, it's kind of the opposite for, re for where you want people to be able to read. So um, in terms of reading areas, um, the places where the hands are not obscuring the screen uh, you know, work out to be the, the best places to have, to have touch targets. And that's probably not, not very surprising um, to any of us in this room. Um, the other thing I wanted to, to mention is, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, good, okay, um, uh, is that people come from native applications to the, to the you know, the touchable with a lot of expectations. Um, so they, they expect to be able to use multi-point uh, multi gestures in order to control the web. And a lot of uh, browsers have implemented that natively to kind of keep up with that expectation. Um, but obviously, building an application like this uh, within the browser is, is something that's been beyond us. And so as Angelina said, we've been working with um, the W3C, and um, it's not just us, it's, it's Mozilla. We jointly proposed this with Mozilla, um, and, and a lot of thanks to them, um, to bring a unified model for these, these pointer devices that are beyond the mouse. Um, we've been using, you know, essentially a mouse event model uh, for the last 15 odd years that really assumes that there's only a, there's only a mouse attached to the computer. Um, we, need to, we need to improve on that. Um, and it's moved from a, a first public working draft to a candidate recommendation um, in roughly five months, which we think you know, uh, demonstrates that there's, there's a lot of, lot of momentum and recognition that this is a real, a real problem. Um, and so I'm going to spend the rest of the, kind of the presentation working through what that means. And essentially, the, the, the top level uh, you know, way to think about this is it's an evolution of, of mouse events um, to be more general. Um, uses the same event model. More or less, you can drop in pointer events for mouse events, and your applications should still work the same. We have added one event, a pointer cancel event, which is primarily used for when there's an orientation change and it, and it makes sense to not process the, 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 the maybe some, some uh, previous touch events that have occurred. Um, but otherwise, it's, it's very similar. What has changed is that we've added a number of, of attributes to provide a richer model um, for handling, handling pointer events. Um, but your existing button, client X, client Y, those attributes remain the same, have the same semantics, um, and are still available to you as web developers. Um, and so working through them one by one, uh, width and height provide you with the ability to have the, you know, or the recognition that in the real world, mo many pointing devices have a real physical size. And kind of the, the canonical example of that is your finger. Um, your finger can have a small amount of, of, of contact area if you're using your, your fingernail, um, and obviously a larger one if you're, you're, you're pushing down very hard. Um, and so this is passed through in terms of in a, a bounding box um, around the, the client X and client Y that gives you some indication of how much of the, um, of the pointer, pointer device is, in, is uh, intersecting with the screen. And this obviously, and you'll see this later, um, is, is you know, a good way of doing things like finger painting applications where you want to have that richness of, of taking advantage of that, inter, uh, that intersection with the screen. Um, there's also the concept of pressure uh, for screens that support it. Um, and tilt y, uh, X and tilt Y. Um, pressure is what you'd expect if the digitizer surface or screen supports it. It gives you an indication of how much pressure is being applied to the screen. Um, tilt, at, tilt X and tilt Y um, are, you know, probably, you know, the, the canonical example there is a pen um, where you might want to have a different effect on the screen depending on the tilt, you know, per, per, perhaps um, apply a stenography kind of different line style or whatnot to match up with the user's expectation. 
Um, <clears throat> these two provide, uh, 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 you know, the ability to under, you know, understand more, uh, or to handle separate, uh, uh, so pointer type gives you the ability to handle um, pointer devices differently. In general, you're going to want to handle them the same, uh, but pointer type allows you to handle, you know, for instance, a pen device differently from a mouse device in, you know, situations where that's important. And then pointer ID is kind of a new concept um, because there can be multiple streams of pointer events. If you think about if you have two or three fingers on the screen at once, those are actually all separate pointer devices um, in, terms of, in terms of this event model. And so pointer ID allows you to disambiguate all those different event streams so that you can handle them in the way that makes the most sense for your application. All right, so I'm going to switch over and do a demo. All right, great. Um, and so the demo I'm going to do is really simple finger painting application. I'm not sure how visible that is. Okay, it's fairly visible. Um, and basically, I have a canvas. Um, I've added some uh, pointer events here, um, added them as event listeners. I'm using in Navigator, there's pointer enabled, uh, which tells you if, these, if uh, pointer uh, pointer events are possible in your browser. Um, there's two types of that. Um, in IE 10, we actually have the vendor prefixed version. And then as, as, as browsers adopt this, there'll be a non-prefixed version called pointer enabled. Um, and then from there, every time we get an event, uh, when we start painting, I'm going to maintain a list of essentially four points. Um, and then uh, as we get individual paint events, I am going to just do a curve between all those, those points that we've built up. And, and finally, uh, as we're doing multiple of these, we'll, I'll, I'll shift them off the end and add the new one to it. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. I'll show you what that looks like. Um, I just thought of a problem. <laughs> OK. Uh, so when you know, the mouse, this, work, this works perfectly. Um, uh, fortunately, I didn't, I didn't think about this problem. Um, but when you touch it, it also has this. Um, the problem I have is that because I'm displaying on the screen, I can't touch this screen. Um, but imagine that was a touch. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, OK, so the problem you have there is that we're not using, so if you look back at this code, we're not using, um, we're not using the pointer ID to actually, um, to actually disambiguate the different streams. So if I had used multi-touch there, it would have it done back and forth across the, two, the different streams of events that uh, were, you know, were being received by the browser. Um, and so to, to disambiguate that, uh, in, this, in this example, I'm using uh, a pointer ID to eventually to basically build up separate sets of, of, of content. Um, uh, and so when we draw the lines, there'll be separate lists, and, it, and, it, and, it'll, and it'll display as you'd expect. Um, so doing two at the same time, you know, essentially it uses a separate uh, the separate streams of list to display it. Um, the final thing you notice there is I'm not using any concept of the width uh, to display, um, or sorry, the width and the height that's passed through as part of the pointer event uh, to display a different uh, width and height for the line. Um, and we can do that with um, event.width and event.height uh, and essentially use that to drive the, the, the width that we're using for the, uh, the line that's displayed. Um, and, and, and if we do that, that's hard to do with my finger. We get slightly bigger widths and what. It works better if it's on the actual screen, but um, what you'll see is that it, it'll, it'll depend on if you're using your, your uh, with a higher quality digitizer, you'll see the, um, it, that it decreases and decreases your byte width of your, uh, your finger. So that's a, that's a brief example of how you use it natively. Um, uh, just want to talk a little bit about how you get started. Um, so IE10 has vendor prefix support for this. Um, this is in without vendor prefixes in IE11. Um, our OpenTech team, so OpenTech inside Microsoft is a team of folks that contribute to open source projects. Um, and they've done a WebKit prototype of this. Um, and it's available here. Um, uh, I believe they also are, have announced an intent to implement for the Blink project as well. Um, uh, uh, as, a, as a formal implementation. Um, but if you really want to get started today, there's a couple of polyfills that are available. Um, Hand.js was developed by a, 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 
a person at Microsoft, and then there's also points.js, um, which is developed by Richard Harris. Um, so that's kind of a quick overview of, of pointer events. Um, I am around uh, the rest of the day if you have any more questions, um, but thank you. I already see a question in the audience, so let's uh, kick this off here. Hey, so yeah. um, to kind of stress what Dominic De Nicola told, about, told us about uh, forcing vendors to expose richer functionality, uh -huh. pointer events are great in the sense of abstracting my mouse and touch events. Uh -huh. What about gestures? Is there anything short there's, term? There's important? not anything. I, I really encourage people to look through that spec. There's not anything in this specification about gestures themselves. Um, it's just this, this event model, but it, it does make a ton of sense to, to start building on top of that for Yeah, because clients. I think most gestures are becoming kind of popular. Culture, exactly. Really, so. Yeah, it makes total sense. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Other questions? OK, one over there. Um, one question about interpreted movements of, uh, like, where you have a pre-assumption of what the user wants to achieve, like a scroll, uh -huh. which is essentially a, a touch on, on mobile devices. Yep. Uh, is anything in the spec there that makes that easier if you want to do, like, headers that, like, retract or something? No, there's, there's nothing in the spec about that. This is purely for um, the, the, the content region of the, of the web page, yeah. OK, I think that's it. I don't see any more hands. Oh, wait, one more. Hold on. Really quick. OK. Um, so that uh, I I'm interested the the 5 millimeter 50 pixel thing. Yeah, I'm glad sure. you're pointing that out. That's great, because uh, uh -huh. I've always wondered what the sweet spot is. Uh, but does that imply anything about text size for like links, you know, intertextual links? Um, we, that, that research mostly did, um, mostly looked at the size in terms of simply clicking it. Um, if you hit me on Twitter, that's my Twitter address, I will, I will find out if we did research around the tech size. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. Thank you very much, Tim. Yeah, uh, thanks we'll for have having me. Next speaker coming Sorry up for shortly. The